Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm your host this week, Bill Hirschman. I'm chief critic and editor of FloridaTheaterOnStage.com. And I'm joined this week by our usual gang, starting with, of pundits and wits and various and sundry hits, <laughs> starting with Karen Stevens, actress, teacher, writer, educator, dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by Renaissance man Michael McKeever, who has more titles than anyone can guess at, including playwright, actor, designer, publicity agent, producer, etc. Graphic the artist. Show, the graphic artist. The show isn't long enough for all his titles. <laughs> and the person who knows all of this better than any of us, noted actress, coach, teacher, producer, Iris Acker. Today, our, our title is colorblind casting. And we have as our special guest someone who knows as much about it as probably anyone in South Florida, Ricky J. Martinez. Ricky is the artistic director of New Theater down in, what is it, Cor it's, it's now South it's actually, Miami? It's unincorporated. <laughs> it's unincorporated <laughs> Miami. It's, it's between Westchester and Sweetwater. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we, we've chosen to have Ricky here is Ricky has done as much colorblind casting probably as almost anyone in this region. And I want to ask you to start with, can you give some of the more notable examples of when you have cast either against the traditional concept of ethnicity or gender or I mean, anything along those lines? Right, race, gender, age. Um, physical attributes, that kind of stuff. We kind of do it all the time. Yeah. So it's, it's not just one instant that I could actually um, pinpoint. But I mean, one obvious one is Henry V. We, we cast uh, Sepiwe, who is a female uh, of African descent. And um, we thought it just fit really well with the text, the concept of, of having a woman come in, which we know uh, Shakespeare only wrote like a, a little bit of uh, amount of women characters. and so. Mm -hmm. to allow her to show the actress to show her versatility. I think that's always what, I mean, what actors are all about, right? We're all supposed to be versatile. So it's to show that versatility, to be able to amplify it <clears throat> to a, a, typically what would be a male dominant role um, and putting a woman into the role and not hiding the fact that she's a woman. What was your thinking from an artistic standpoint when you decided to cast like that? or when you ignore ethnicity, or I remember uh, you had a, a, a vision-impaired person playing uh, Shylock, if I remember. Yes, we, we, we don't what, ignore what your it. Thought? We don't ignore the fact that that's what it is. Um, and it's not like a clever kind of scheme that I were tr trying to trick, a gimmick that I'm trying to do either. Um, I think because basically I'm, I'm a minority myself. Uh, I'm also a minority because of my sexuality as well. Um, I think it's natural to me, it comes natural. I don't see, I don't put a, f a filter in my eyes to be able to see it, to, to feel it, to, that kind of thing. I just go with the flow uh, and I naturally, um, when I'm having auditions, I look for the best actor. Hmm. The actor or the actress, right, that is going to take the role, chew on it and then spit it back out like in, with incredible theatricality. So, so that's really interesting. So when, you, when you're holding an audition, when you're casting a specific part, you don't go in thinking this will be a great part to, um, to break some molds with. You're just looking at actors um, who you think might be good, whether they be male, female, black, or white. Most of the times, for sure. Most of the times. Yeah, I mean, that's the playwright. I mean, uh, with Shakespeare, you don't have a problem. <laughs> but with, uh, with living playwrights, do you yes. think of consulting them? Oh, we definitely consult them. Oh, God, we don't do I anything without consulting a living playwright. <laughs> <laughs> I, think that, I mean, that goes against everything that we're about, that new theater's about, okay. seriously. Um, uh, uh, even if we can't get to them, we still send their agents. Thank you. Uh, emails. I, uh, I, I, and I, and I, and I, I have a year in advance where, when we plan our season that I'm trying to really fig find and contact that playwright, make connection with it, because it's really important to what I'm about, what I believe theater is about for me and for our community and what I want to represent for our theater. So having them in, they have their say as well. And I, and I try, I mean, some of the, uh, most writers, I mean, we're, we're writers, we're two sure. playwrights in the room as well. Sometimes you get a little hesitant. Mm. Really like, I don't know, but I really see it a certain way. And I say, you know what? Um, surrender a little. Allow, allow me to take over and show you this actor who came in and just blew our socks off 
for that role? I, I have to say, I've worked with Ricky as a director, as a playwright, with Ricky being um, uh -huh. the director of one of my shows, and you were incredibly um, engaged and, and got me engaged with uh, the, the casting. And it's you important. Were, it was it was very much a collaboration, which I, I, I'm sure we both agree is what really produces the best work. Correct. I mean, you want to be. I, I mean, you, you you just as a playwright, you're a writer. You just slaved. How how many uh, you know weeks, months, sure. years over a play, and you know it's so intense. And then to not be invited into the room. I mean, it's deadly. I mean, is that, is that something wrong about that? Well, has anyone ever objected? Has anyone said? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Edward Albee, for instance, is famous sure. for uh, having at least some level of control over who is cast, mm -hmm. and he has, in fact, and as Stephen Sondheim as well, has objected uh, when someone has envisioned, has ca wanted to cast a role. Uh, in a way that was not the way they envisioned Sure, typically, it. Albie, I know that he has problems with like uh, men playing his women roles, Precisely. right? Like Streetcar yeah. Named Desire, that's why they made Belle Reprieve, which right. is like so they could uh, make a lesbian kind of thematic, uh, gender bending kind of thing. But um, I think what you look at when you have living playwrights is contractually. When you get to the contract, you uh, um, uh, stated in your contract that you can go a different uh, for a different type a different gender a different age um, depending on the, what the uh, the vision of the of the director is you know and some playwrights will just say straight up no you mm. know and that's okay then you know what really? you're playing with you know what your borders are wow. you know so then you say okay then we're going to sign this contract knowing that you know but most writers i feel that they so want to be produced oh. the ones that, that not have you know the, the all the ego and all of the awards and all of the your fame behind them. Not that I'm saying that Edward Albee has all that stuff. <clears throat> but, um, most of them want to be produced, so they, therefore, they will say, "Let me, let me, let me venture there. Let me see what that would add or subtract from the script." And since it usually is a world premiere, I mean, you have that ability to, to be able to to do that, to do that. Because so, I find no, that. No, I mean, no, no. You had a follow Because you, and it should be mentioned, because New Theater, one of the things that it does a great deal of is world premieres. Correct. You, or the second, second or third. third yes, which are even more important, as we know. Mm -hmm. okay. So when you choose your season, um, is it with that in mind, I mean, or is it just foregone conclusion that you're going to think about non traditional casting, whatever you choose? For great your question. Season? I think when, we, when I choose my, my season, I'm not interested in. I, I don't see it in my head as like um, um, I'm not seeing people in my head. I'm not seeing actors. I'm, I, I do. I, I, so for some specific plays, I do think can our community uh, um, uh, does it have the talent to to do the play? Like, can I find it here in Miami? Because we love to we hire local. I mean, that's that's we we're, we're very prideful of what our community is about. And I think we have that talent in South Florida that we don't have to look elsewhere. I think it's here. It's just sometimes you might not be able to see it immediately. Mm -hmm. You have to hunt for it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I look at this. I, I look at the structure of the play. I look at the play itself. What is the meaning? What is the theme behind it? Is it going to really impact people? Is it you know, what is it going to do? When you choose a show, I remember a while back you did um, a King Lear, and you had a, a masterful King Lear. When you when you James choose Randolph. James Randolph is a brilliant actor mm -hmm. and, and did a really lovely job as King oh, Lear. Amazing. Uh, the question is, when when you choose a show where you have a central character that you have to cast it really well, do you do that with a particular actor in mind when at the beginning of the season? Yeah, it depends. That's like good. if there's a specific play, that was my, my predecessor, Rafael Diacha, actually did he directed oh, okay. King Lear and and he knew he wanted James Randolph to play that role. I mean he he talked with them a year in advance to prep him already, saying we're gonna do this uh, coming up. Uh, I also asked my actors, my com our company of actors, what role do you want to do? Oh, how you know, nice. like uh, what uh, you, you get that? Have you, how often do you get that option? A director oh, yeah. says to an actor. So I have actors coming to me all the time that are primarily company members and, and say, um, "I want to do this," and I'm like, "Okay." So I store it. You know, I keep wow. it back here in my vocabulary, in my file cabinet, and I'm like, <laughs> when I think it's ready, when it when it rhymes or, or it fuses with um, the season vision, the theme of, of that I see for for the vision uh, for the season. Sorry. Um, I I pull it out, and I'm like, this is my ace, you know. And and then, but I'm going back to your question, Karen, just to fi finish up on that. Uh, um, uh, I think primarily I start uh, um, seeing uh, people when it comes to callbacks or auditions. Then what we what I what I um, push upon our directors, or I encourage, 
our directors, not push because it's so violent, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to bully anybody. <laughs> <laughs> it could be bully. assertive. That's it another, could be assertive. Yeah, exactly. That's another show. That's another show. That's another show. <laughs> um, um, I try to encourage them to have, a, when they call back, have a wide net. Not to just see it in one linear way, but to mm. see it, in, see it uh, uh, in all different kinds of ages and see what the script can take. What's your image? You know? I mean, we know we've got to go to Gable's stage. We know the kind of work that Joe Adler does. How would I describe the new theater to someone? I think new theater, um, I'm fascinated by styles, so I think you won't see realism um, continuously. I think you, which uh, uh, you'll kind of come in and you're going to see expressionism, you're going to see avant-garde, you're going to see styles, European flavor, South American flavor, you're going to see stories that are not uh, your typical um, story, like uh, a very realistic story. You're going to see different mm -hmm. structures. I so think does that's, that play into the idea of non-traditional casting? Oh, definitely. I mean, Talk that's, a little isn't bit that a, about that. That's just you're casting a playwright. You're you're already being non-traditional by by um, bringing in female playwrights, by, uh, writers of color. You're I mean, you're already you're already uh, doing the first kind of uh, uh, push push away of like tradition right at the beginning. I think, and that starts at the core, right, with the play with the writer. Do you think it, you see it as something that's necessary? non-traditional casting, the concept, of it, is it a necessary thing or is it just something um, that is a good thing to do? You know, oh, God, no. To, to, you know, is it a way of, of giving more diverse actors work since there's such little I think work about myself, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I think about myself and my community uh, and what chances we could have, what opportunities we have. Um, and then I think, and as one, I amplify it. I amplify it to, to national, and I amplify it even to international. Uh, it's not something that I, that I, you know, I, it, it's just in my part of my being, the part of my breath, you know. Um, and so I don't really, I don't try to tend to think about it mm -hmm. as much. I'm not like, oh, I'm going to be color, I'm going to be a colorblind caster now, you know, or whatever word. So you're not trying to say any. You're not trying to make a statement mm, necessarily. Not necessarily. No, no. About the universal, the universality of, of a theme by no. saying this could be this community. This could I be am this actually community. no, there, no. I am trying to say something. I am definitely. I, I, I think it goes back to the versatility of actors. That if if, if we're actors, we can. We can traverse every kind of of um, of wall of, of of obstacle in that sense. Well, how mm -hmm. much of this is, um, and this is sort of a, a stalking horse. How much of this is a matter of your acting pool in the 15, 20, 30 miles around your theater geographically has such a multi-ethnic uh, demographic to it in the first place. Uh, they're not doing a lot of multi, uh, they're not doing a lot of colorblind casting up in Palm Beach County, for instance, some, but not much. But you have such a pool. Does that play a part? And if it does, exactly how does that? It helps, it helps, of it? course. It, I represent what we're about. You know, Miami, uh, my, my friend, you know, um, it, which is a melting pot. And it's always been that. And I think I, I, we represent that, you know. So, with, with, with that in mind, going back, what, when, what, when would you say that non-traditional casting doesn't work? Oh, that's good. It, oh my God, I knew there was going to be a question that's like. <laughs> 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 oh, that's when cool. is it not good? Yeah, is, there, is, there, is, ever, it, yeah. Yeah, is there ever uh, a project or a play where uh, the? Uh, Colorblind casting would be a hindrance or get in the way of the storytelling. Is there such a situation, or is is everything open? Well, it's really funny because I was thinking a, a little bit about that, <clears throat> and we, I mean, we had I think a, a Nazi character in one of our shows in, in, one, in mm -hmm. our rep, in a repertory of mm -hmm. uh, 28 years. Um, we had a Nazi character, and the director decided. That he was going to cast him as a uh, an Afro American man, <laughs> and so we were like, "Oh my God, is it going to take the audience out? You know, oh. is it going to? How is that going to yeah. work?" But you know, mm. what, the good thing about theater is that we could make commentaries like that. We could put a black man in in as a Nazi, and we could and, and did it work? And extra, yes, everybody was like, <gasps> everybody was more intrigued, and understood that there was a vehicle behind it, there was a mm. meaning behind it. You know, um, wow. why why can't he play that role? You know why? Why couldn't why couldn't any any actor just of of a minority or ethnicity or race play that role? But right? sometimes, 
But sometimes you have, particularly in naturalistic plays, you have themes and settings in which that kind of casting may work and it may not. For instance, Correct. there recently was a streetcar named Desire in New York with Blair Underwood playing Stanley, but set in the melting pot of New Orleans, mm. sure. that wasn't distracting. A few seasons before that, I believe <clears throat> they did Cat on a Hot Tin Roof with the brilliant James Earl Jones, who is a great actor. Right. But you saw a completely African-American cast on a southern plantation talking and acting in ways that, yes, and they were brilliant actors, but you kept going, wow, they've got a bunch of African-American actors there doing, work, you know, become being plantation owners. <laughs> and yeah. I guess the question is, aren't, I, I agree, aren't there places where it gets distracting, not that they're not great actors, but where the audience is painfully aware that they're going, wow, isn't James Earl Jones doing a great job playing a southern plantation mm -hmm. owner? Or, mm -hmm. you know, the all-running joke is, you know, w would you cast an Italian-American family and raisin in the sun? I mean, you know. I think, I think, um, I think where the, where the problem happens or, or, or is, is with how stuck you are with realism. Oh, I think that's ahead. where it comes to. I think it comes where, where you where you have the head to head on vision, um, is when it comes to realism. If if we're in a, in a, a world that's about theater, about creativity, about exploring all of all everything, why can't we go see a, a cast like that? Why, what why about can't Oriental? We? You know, I mean, the, not, you know, the Nazi. Yes. Could you put an Oriental in that sure, role? Sure, why not? I couldn't why accept not? it. You couldn't because it of your, your me, realism, yeah. the, mor the mores that you have. But we've already seen a, a, a streetcar named Desire with it, with its original cast, with amazing actors, mm -hmm. a, a traditional casting. Why can't we see it any any other way? I mean, if you're going to go to the theater, you're going to you're going to go and you're going to you don't know what to expect. That's the beauty about theater, right? You never know what you're going to get. Uh, 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 and, and why would you? I mean, that's my theater. You know, that's the theater that I like. I don't want to. I don't want to see, you know, uh, an amazing musical a thousand and one times. I, yeah. I want to see new musicals as well. I want to hear new writers. I want to see new actors, new dif new definitions of how they could take those roles. Uh, and, and I'm not eluding your question. I think no, your question no, is a no, great question. Yeah. You know, it's just I don't see it that way. I want to see more. I think there's new, a new, a, a new contemporary audience. A new that wants to see the play in a different way. Have you ever uh, cast a show um, and then traditionally? Said, no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> there was that one. Uh, <laughs> there was that one. Well, uh, have you ever cast a show non-traditionally and um, sat back afterwards and said, oh, "Didn't work as as well as I had hoped." I mean. Does it always work? No. <laughs> no. God, no. It, it might not work for many things. It might just work because the director. Or, or there could be bad yes. chemistry, uh, d d having no nothing to do with the color of a sure. person's skin. There's just exactly. bad chemistry. Exactly. Or age, or, or, or body, you know, body um, definition. Mm -hmm. I, it, it could work for. It could not work for many different reasons other than that. Well, um, you, you, you know, you said something about you know realism. I mean, there's that point where. You know, r reality and history is so pervasive. I mean, can you really trump that? You know, I mean, I, I can see about wanting to be creative and different, but, t you know, like in today's world, we have so many revisionists, people who are trying to rewrite history um, to, to fit their own perspective. And I'm not saying that that's what non traditional casting does, Correct. but is there a danger of running into that kind of thing where people who don't really know what history is or what the real story was. They come in and they see someone, mm -hmm. say for instance, an African American playing a Nazi who if Hitler had had his way, he would have gotten rid of them too. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? I think, I think you got, of course you've got to be yeah. sensitive about the issues mm -hmm. at hand. And it, again, it doesn't always work. Yeah. So, but I think you also have the ability to have program notes mm -hmm. to be able to explain it. Yes. You know, a little yes. bit before you actually see the actual event. Um, when it comes to something that's so historical, I mean, uh, uh, that's always the tricky part, right? When you when you get some, an actor to play a historical figure, mm -hmm. um, people are going to perceive it a certain way, exactly, right? So you've got to you've got to understand that. Um, uh, like we have David Sampson, president of the Marlins, playing uh, Lorne Michaels <laughs> coming up in our in our season. It's mm -hmm. like are we already getting like you know funny things? How could a, 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 a guy that a baseball guy be an actor? You know he's actually a really <laughs> oh. amazing guy. He's a great yeah. actor. I've directed him before, and he's brilliant. But people are going to come to see it. 
So it's, it yeah. is fascinating. Sure. Because of him. And I know that he can do it, you know? You know, your audience, I see more students, more young people, oh, I should you. say, not even say, but young people than any other theater. Oh, gosh. Well, you know, we created that Boom Frog series, a, a series that's uh, primarily for um, a, a younger audience um, and, and more to their tastes in a way. Um, they are not like us, that we've, we, we've had more of a traditional kind of growing up in the sense of theater and realism. They, they don't know what European theater is. They don't, they don't know those styles. They don't know expressionism. They don't have avant-garde. They don't know that style. So they could come and they, and, and, and they, they connect it to poetry. Mm -hmm. You know, they connect theater to poetry, to spoken word, to uh, music, which transcends so many different borders. So I thought, you know what, we've got to keep that alive. Our main, our main stage uh, shows, as well as our a Boom Frog series, a new, a new uh, um, a series that does celebrate that as well. You know, well, trying was, to balance both of them. Everybody's trying so hard to get young people in, and you've done it. Oh. I want to ask the four of you, since you're all actors, have any of you done non I know you have. Yes. Non traditional, have played non traditional roles. <laughs> what was it like? The Nazi. What was, she was the Nazi. <laughs> she was the Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was, was there an added That's challenge? Now, you've played, uh, we should point out, your show Bridge and Tunnel that you do, you play multiple yes. characters of multiple ethnicities. Do you, what do you do to, to as a, playing non traditional? roles or roles that you wouldn't necessarily mm -hmm. be immediately cast for in any other venue? Well, the Bridge and Tunnel was actually the only show that I did that was, there were characters that were so far removed from myself, like an a elderly Russian man and, you know, Chinese woman and, right. you know, um, uh, a, a Mexican-American male. Um, for Florida Stage, I did quite a few shows that that they cast non-traditionally, which was in my favorite, oh, benefited me, me. But they were women, you, you know, um, and so the role could have gone either way. You know, it could have been a, a black character or a white character. I played uh, Love in one of Michael's plays, Kiki, uh -huh. Love. <laughs> it, was, it was perfect casting. It was tight casting, actually. It was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was. Here's, a, here's a prime example. The, that particular play was Charlie Cox Runs with Scissors, mm -hmm. and the character is the personification of love. It's death and love wrestle for a man's soul. Okay. And as written, all she had to be was beautiful. That's how it was, and blind, because love is blind. And so I had been a huge fan of Karen's works for years, and so I had always pictured her blonde and voluptuous, and that's just how I picture when I wrote her. When Lou Turrell, the, the artistic director, said, we'd like to go with Karen Stevens, <laughs> I gotta say, I danced because I never went there. I wow. never That's occurred so to me to do it. And she knocked it out of the park since then. The play's been done around the world. Oh. It's been done as uh, an African American, as an Asian American, as the blonde bombshell that I originally envisioned, <laughs> as a large woman, as a small woman. And, and it wow. works. And it, the beauty about that is to see these wonderful different interpretations, no matter what color of their skin, no matter Correct. where they're from, you know, tackle, tackle a role. But when I, you do that, yeah. But when you do that, what goes through your mind? Do you have to put your head in a different place, or is it just finding the truth of the character? It's what, just what do you finding do? the truth of the character, sure. and yeah. not being able to fall into the stereotype as right. well, right? Exactly, exactly. Um, that yeah. you have that you have your your take on the stereotype, right? You know? Exactly. You could put more into it. You yes. Know? We don't. I don't think that we want it to to have like. Um, I mean, Michael, for example, right? A, 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 a white American. Right, you you I don't want to just you yeah. don't want Nor you don't don't want Nor Norwegians not to do your play. Of course you, not. Right, you uh, you know you don't that's you don't want uh, uh, to cast people that are gay in gay roles always. I mean that's non traditional as well, right? Right. So we I mean I think we're already breaking those ba mm -hmm. boundaries yes. more and more, specifically with this new generation as well. I think it's it it's just still very tough. I mean, do we still see uh, more women writers than men the male writers? I mean, we, ha we have the women writers, but who's producing the work? Interesting. Right. You know, I've spent my career playing old ladies. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. I, now I'm getting close so I could just play myself. So they're not offering. It's yeah. several years. Still <laughs> well, Juliet gets played 
you know, by, by older women most of the time because well, they have the skill, they have the aptitude mm -hmm. to be able to jump mm -hmm. back and forth through all those emotional uh, moments. You know, we know the age, it's tough. Yeah, yeah. That's what's so tough to accept it. If, if you don't know, it doesn't matter. Do you direct, when, when, when you had the young woman playing Henry V, the African-American, yeah. how did you direct her? What advice did you give her for dealing with what audience expectations might be? or anything along those lines. I think when she took on the role, she already knew, like, oh my goodness, mm. yeah. you know, what have I taken on? <laughs> and I think with the director, uh, Ron Mancraviti, um, That's right, he uh, pu uh, pushed with, no, it's okay, I was part of the process as well, right. um, was the masculinity of the role. Mm. What, you know, so that she had to be a leader. Mm. So the, so the, the, still having a femininity take on it, it was still feminine there because that role has feminine qualities as well. You know, he has love, he has compassion, he has a, a full roundness, but the masculinity was one of the things that he definitely wanted to bring out. Mm. Nice. Okay. So that I think was the main focus on the, of, of her, of, of what we wanted to get out of her as well. So if I'm understanding, it's not a matter of asking the audience to be distracted or to, be, to ignore the differences but to embrace them as another kind of theatrical device yes. in which, you know, in fact, there is not really a house standing yes. behind you and you're not really, this is just mm, another yeah, way of sure. approaching Yes, yeah. suspending your, your disbelief, well, so right? Yes. You come to theater right. in that way. You come to suspend your disbelief. I mean, you go to film and, and you very rarely do you see that suspension unless it's like a Charles Ludlum, uh, you know, um, or, or Charles Bush, right? Charles, Charles Bush. Bush, right. Um, do you suspend that reality? But there's not a lot of films that are, 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 are uh, different that way, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we're nearly out of time, and I'm, we probably have another 75 questions to get <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> and you quite probably could continue. But we do need to have to uh, wrap up. We want to uh, thank Ricky J. Martinez oh, thank you. for thank being you so here much, and opening so our fun. eyes and hopefully our horizons. And we want to encourage everyone out there to go to as much theater as possible and in a bit of shameless self-promotion. If you want to know where to find out what's playing this week or any other week, go to floridatheateronstage.com. Again, thank you to Ricky, thank you to our panel, and thanks to all of you for coming to see our show. Thank you, good night.